Okay, so <coughs> we're on section one, part two, classifications and diversity. So it starts off with the uh, uh, the definition of a binomial system, and it's a system that we use to name um, organisms based on two names, hence the term bi for binomial. And um, the first name is your uh -oh, your genus name, so Homo would be the genus, and this is for humans. And then your second name would be uh, your trivial name, which is also the name of the species, but you kind of have to say both parts together to actually call it a species. Um, kind of hard to explain, so I kind of I like to call this one descriptive name or common name. Um, when you're writing the scientific notation or using a binomial system. It needs to be underlined or italicized, and your genus name, here, mousey, 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 yeah, your genus name has to be capitalized. Um, the trivial name is lowercase, okay? Um, now, the animals are classified. We're going to go into the animal kingdom. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. It doesn't, but that's what I'm sticking with. So we're going to talk about the animal kingdom. So your kingdom is animalia, and it goes down into more specific grouping as you go through. Um, so kingdom, inside of a kingdom is a phylum, inside of a phylum is a class, inside of each class are orders, inside of orders are families, inside of families a genus, and then a singled out species. Okay, um, easy way to remember those groupings, King Philip came over for grape, spaghetti, green skittles, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, key, oopsies, key to the word species Species are groups of animals that can mate, and their children can also mate and have children. So an example is uh, donkeys. Let me just grab this picture for you. Okay, so um, a male donkey plus a female horse will give you a mule. Now, two mules cannot make another mule. Um, it's kind of weird. So, you know male lion, female tiger will make a liger, but two ligers will not make another liger, so they're not a new species. Okay, a little funny, so species are a group of animals that are similar and can produce offspring that can produce offspring, so genetically viable. Um, so we're going to go into a classification of animals known as vertebrates. Um, vertebrates are animals that have a backbone and inside the backbone uh, you know, nervous uh, setup. So a central nervous system, we could call it, but I don't like to call it that. So real quick, we're going to bang through it and get it done. First group is fish. They have uh, dual chambered hearts. They can move using fins. They lay eggs, swim bladder. Yeah, just keep, I'm generally going to read what's on this. I'm the gangster that I am. I just stole this PowerPoint. So feel free to read it and then you have an assignment after you read it. Amphibians, so smooth, moist skin is the big one. Um, reptiles, dry, scaly skins is the big one. Birds, or aves, A-V-E-S, like aviation. Uh, and then mammals, there you go. Now what you wanna do with that information is turn it into some sort of a table and I'll show you what I mean at the end. So those are your vertebrates. Then you get to your invertebrates. Um, please note, for Cambridge, you only have to know uh, arthropods. And in the arthropods, you need insects, crustaceans, arachnids, and myriapods. And you only need to know annelids, nematodes, and mollusks. Um, you can, there are a few more phylum that are there. You don't need those. So basic characteristics of animals, which we already went through. Read for yourself, I stole this. Invertebrate, no backbones. Most of the animals in the animal kingdom are invertebrates. So the big one is uh, nematodes, the first one. These are small round worms. They are pretty much just a tube and a tube. They're not segmented, that's the big boy. They're just one worm, just one smooth, flat piece, okay? So think round worms. And then you have the other type of worms that you're used to, which is um, Annelids, or annelida, let's just go for annelids. They are segmented, so they have, like earthworms, little pieces that are just 
uh, go back that are just stuck together <laughs> segments okay and of course there's your features that you need to put into a table on your own so repeating segments so we're still on annelids that does include leeches because they have segments <laughs> um, mollusks yes do not get confused with mollusks snails are your mollusks but so are octopod and squids octopod octopus octopi all right so there's a basic features of mollusks right there again this information just needs to go into a table it's a bunch of reading bang it into a table learn the table um, so different types of mollusks you don't need to learn every feature of each one um, the big one is arthropods your basic uh, features of arthropods are jointed uh, jointed legs segmented body hard outer shell okay so all arthropods will have those features and then those features are broken down into further groups so again jointed legs outer shell and um, segmented body all right first group is insects you know your basic insect stuff three pairs of legs or six legs in total body part has three parts again table don't worry about metamorphosis please note when we're talking about insects we're talking about adult insects not babies arachnids spiders scorpions ticks and mites yay nope 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 myriapods are centipedes and millipedes again there's their features and then crustaceans that's a big lobster all right so what you need to do is turn all of this stuff into a tabla and be able to do that off the cuff again I don't really care what your table looks like have some pictures have some words um, this is what a student done off the internet they did it all put it all into a table and they were able to reproduce that over and over and over again all right so and then a basic one um, plant characteristics you don't have to go too deep just monocot and dicot which stands for monocotyledon and dicotyledon if you are monocot you have a single cotyledon uh, go back so if you remember from well as you learn sorry not as you remember where's my mouse um, the cotyledon is the food source for the uh, seed uh, monocots single their leaves are long and narrow most you'll see a lot of it with grass their vascular bundles are scattered and their flowers have parts that are in multiples of three versus a dicot dicotyledon two cotyledons their leaves are branch have branch veins in them so one in the middle and then it kind of just sticks off to the side all over the place their vascular bundles are in a ring and their floral parts come in multiples of four and five so their flower has 20 or 10 or 12 versus this what's funny is like the multiples of three and the multiples of four what happens if it's a common multiple like 12 you know that one's weird I don't know you have to look at the leaves um, let's talk about viruses now viruses are kind of weird they they're not really an animal but are they I don't know it's kind of hard to explain technically it's alive so the first thing about viruses is they are teeny 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 tiny they are a hundred times smaller than bacteria and bacteria are a thousand times smaller than regular cells so they do not have a real cell structure they're pretty much just a strand of DNA or RNA surrounded by a little capsid or a shell surrounded by an envelope okay um, so the DNA this capsid is a protein coat and the envelope allows the virus to get into oh I didn't put it there they go into another cell and this little piece of DNA finds its way into the nucleus and it starts it just takes over the cell it makes the cell do what it wants it to do so let's let's say you had a friend who was writing a story all right so he's writing on a piece of paper a story about dinosaurs and you start talking to him about cats and you'll notice he'll accidentally write cats every five minutes viruses do the same thing they get into the nucleus and make the cell do something it doesn't want to do um, fungi creepy little things um, they are multicellular and they form these structures that connect everybody together called hyphae and they form this long network that you will call a mycelium all right so the nuclei are spread throughout the hyphae well throughout the mycelium and fungi eat in a very weird way what they do is they pretty much barf on the food 
and then they just roll around in the barfed food. Uh, well, the food will break down outside, and they'll just absorb it through their uh, cell wall. So just like a plant cell, fungi have a cell wall, and it is just like a plant cell, made out of cellulose, and in some cases, it's made out of chitin. Um, so reproduction, I don't have it on this slide because I'm so prepared. Um, hyphae reproduce through uh, spores. So I think mushrooms, they have a little part that'll poke out, that'll give off spores and just spread them, and those spores will land on something that they'll uh, grow up and repeat the process. Nasty. So um, what is it? Yeast is a fungi, and so is mucor. Mucor is the prime example. That's, that's bread mode. Okay. So remember, fungi digest outside of themselves and then absorb whatever gets broken down. And then we have bacteria. Also, like plant cells, they have a cell wall. Okay? They're about a thousand times smaller than a regular cell, and they have a cell wall that is made out of, well, I don't have it on this slide. I had it on the other one. So we won't get into names on that one because I don't feel like spelling it. All right. Um, just like a cell, cell membrane, they're, they're pretty much the slow cousin of plant cells because of this little chromosome here. Um, plant cells and animal cells, all their chromosomes are wound up really tight and packed in a suitcase called a nucleus. Uh, bacteria cells never really got that organized, so they just keep all their chromosomes floating around inside the cytoplasm. Uh, these plasmids are also oops, these little rings of instruction and DNA that float around as well. And funny thing is, we can add plasmids and change plasmids and DNA to get them to do what we want them to do. All right, we're almost done. Alternate classifications. So regular classification, we classify animals based on what we see. OK, all you, I see a bunch of cats. You cats all have spots, you go over there. You cats all have stripes, you go over there. You cats are all black, you go over there. You cats are all beige, you go there. And then we say, well, you're beige and big, so you're a lion. You're beige and small, so you're Garfield. All right? So in this situation, we can do the same thing. We have a group of animals. Let's classify them. Um, everybody who is blue, go to the left. Everyone who's gray, go to the right. You know? Or everyone who's smiling, go one way. Everyone who's not smiling, go the other. That's how we classify at the moment. Um, an alternative way to classify, oh, I did not animate that right, is to look at blood types and do DNA sequencing. And that way we can work out whose grandparents are who. So if I took blood tests and were pretending that I DNA sequenced and got these crazy letters, and I found that these guys all had A, B, C, D, E, and F in common, then what we know is all their grandpas, or their grandpa was the same person, or their ancestor, all right? And these two, LMNOP, Elemenu PQR. Oh, it goes all up to Q. Elemenu PQ are the same, so they must have had the same grandpa. So it's kind of like a family tree. The upside to doing it this way, um, your adopted cousin that looks just like you isn't going to be in your family tree because we did it by blood. So in these situations, someone who looks like you, we could say is your relative just because they look like you and they act like you. Um, what we'll find is they're actually not once we do DNA sequencing, all right? And that's when it all starts to make a little bit more sense. Um, and we've, we can have a really good example. Let's say in the US, there are two family of stars, all right? So these are both families of gray stars. And one of them get on a boat and go to Africa, and they continue to grow as a family, and they become yellow stars. What you'll notice is that they're very similar, but they just have a few differences, and that's how that happens. Okie dokie. Um, so let's just double check the syllabus really quick. Uh, define and describe binomial system. Yes. List the main features of vertebrates. Yes. No. Oh, I didn't tell you the name of this. Cladistics. The common ancestor, or finding out you all have the same grandpa based on DNA testing, is called cladistics. Main features of viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Nah, done ish. I can't think of anything else for those guys. Really small cell walls, not a real cell. Bang. Uh, cool. So again, the big thing is to sit down and make a table. You should also make a table for the DNA, not DNA, 
viruses, bacteria, and fungi as well. 